Okay, let's look into cooperation strategies. If we have not only one game to play, but if we play repetitive games, so multiple times. Now, um, there was a work by um, a guy called Robert Axelrod, and you also wrote the foreword in one of our books. Very proud of that. And um, he introduced an interesting question, and he called it Iterative Prisoner's Dilemma. And that was already in the early 80s, and he had some very nice books um, about um, the complexity of cooperation and the um, evolution of uh, evolution and the theory of games. Um, very interesting, if you would like to, to look into them. Um, a lot of insights, but what he did is, besides being a um, consultant for the president, he came up with these ideas of atonement in the 90s. And he's, he invited um, other researchers to hand in a program that um, could play against another program playing the prisoner's dilemma, but this time multiple times. And what he gave out was um, the following idea. He said, we have two players and we have um, the option to cooperate or defect. Both of the players can do it. And we introduce some different points here. One is the reward, one is called the sucker, the temptation and the penalty. And we come back to this. And the reward, he said, is what, some, what both players will get if they cooperate. So both have a reward if they cooperate. If they both defect, they will also get the same point. It's a penalty, right? A penalty points. And if they did defect, well, player one will get the temptation points and the other one will get the sucker points. And of course, T has to be larger than S. There's something already we can see from that. In the other case, player one um, gets the sucker points and the player two gets the temptation. So here also T has to be larger than S. It's the same S and T as you have seen before. Now, if you look at the overall points, Xrod gave them out uh, later, um, and he asked the following questions. First of all, in terms of cooperation, what is the robustness? So what type of strategy can thrive in a variegated environment composed of other using a wide variety of more or less sophisticated strategies? So a variety of sophisticated strategies that were different researchers handing in their program, right? The other question is stability. Under what condition can such a strategy, once you post there, resist and be robust against the invasion of other strategies. So for example, if you always play nice and there's somebody playing always bad, how can you make sure the bad guy is not taking over and everybody plays bad, which is not very good for the whole system? And the initial viability is, so if you found a strategy that's robust and stable, how can it really enter an environment where it has not seen before? So if nobody has been cooperative, and you come in and you are cooperative, how can you convince the others to be cooperative too? So think about the football stadium. Nobody wants to cooperate and you want to try to convince them, not by talking to them, but by maybe a technology uh, or technical solution there. Okay, so let's start with the robustness. So this is nothing else than the points you get out of the game. So if you look at um, these um, points that you have to give out, um, we have four different points. T, temptation, R is the reward, P is the penalty, and S is the sucker. We know that T has to be larger than S, therefore I already put it like this, and T has also to be larger than R, so there needs to be a temptation to cheat over the other. If you don't have a, a temptation point that is higher than the reward, we all, always would like to cooperate, right? So the game would only work if T is larger than R. Now, the penalty must be also larger than the sucker. So um, if you would not have this, then um, you would always try to um, maybe do some tricks, as I'll explain to you later. And the reward must be larger than the penalty. Then cooperation is doing better than non-cooperation. There should be also this kind of rule. Now, if you put these into a placement, then the temptation is larger than the reward, larger than the penalty, larger than the sucker. But important is also that the reward is larger than 
half of the sucker and the temptation points. Why is this important? If we get a reward and the reward for both of us is smaller than the temptation and sucker together, then the others could say, we are not cooperating, but we, we are nice to each other and we always change the role. So we always be, sometimes I get the temptation points, sometimes I get the sucker points, but in total I get more. So therefore, we have only these two different requirements to make such a game work. And this is also the work of Robert Axelrod that he came up with in, in his book. Now, when Robert Axelrod um, explained this in the first tournament, he asked people, you can submit any strategy, as many strate strategies as you want. And um, we played 200 rounds and he got 14 different submissions. So you can imagine there is a computer, the, the strategies will be played against each other and uh, they looked up which strategy was the best. And the strategies, they differed in the amount of code, for example. So there was a strategy with only four lines of code. There was a strategy with 160 lines of code. And um, there was one winning strategy, by far winning. And this is um, something that was called tit for tat strategy by Professor Anatole Rapp Rappoport. And tit for tat was already written on the board from the base station room comic that you have seen in the beginning of the lecture. Now, what made this strategy so interesting? Um, before we explain you that, Axelrod said, let's do a second tournament some years later. And um, he said, still, any strategy can be submitted. Multiple submissions are still allowed. We play 200 rounds, and this time we got 62 submissions. And um, also here, um, they, this time they knew about tit for tat, but nobody was able to beat the strategy tit for tat. Surprisingly, tit for tat was exactly that strategy that had only four lines of code, right? And tit for tat strategy was quite simple. It just said, I will cooperate in my first move, and in any other further step, I will do exactly what you have done to me in the last move, right? So if somebody's always nice to you, then you start with cooperation. You see that he cooperated also in the last step, you will cooperate and go on and on and on like this. If somebody wants like to um, steal the point from you by defection in the first place, tit for tat will do the same to you. And here you see that tit for tat has already the five different principles um, incorporated that we have derived from nature. It can be reciprocal, but it can also detect cheaters and it will punish the cheaters. So it, somebody is always defecting, you will always give him defection back. Okay, so it seemed that tit for tat could not, never be beaten, but um, surprisingly in 2004 when they um, just redid the tournament just for fun, they knew nobody will beat tit for tat because mathematically it was proven it was the best strategy. Um, there was the University of Southampton who beat tit for tat, right? And how did they do this? They played master and servant strategies. What they really did is they just brought in multiple strategies and the task of these strategies was, let's say, some of them brought down tit for tat. They always played defection when it came tit for tat. But when they found out by playing the game and they had a certain pattern by, they, by which they could um, could recognize each other, so cognition again is very important here, what they did is they brought some of the strategies up by always taking the sucker points and giving the temptation points to the other side. Now, um, I will show you the points later, but first of all, tit for tat, very simple strategy. It's also very nice because this is something that we maybe can implement later <laughs> on an embedded device. Um, and the problem now is the communication might be error prone, right? So what would happen if I cooperate in the first step and the other side also would like to cooperate, but the signal that the cooperation took place is broken? So it's not really the signal, hey, I cooperated. If you have to do something in a wireless sensor network that you, you say, I don't get packets, but you wanted to cooperate, but it did not was received. So should you punish the other side right away, right? What is about this payoff tolerance, right? 
And how would something like this work if you have a very short-term cooperation? Um, here again the uh, prisoner's dilemma from um, tournament from 2004. Here are some um, strategies, right? Uh, or the, let's say the, the player, then the strategy, the number of uh, games that were played, in this not 200, 224, and how many they won, how many tied, how many lost, and how many points in total. And you see the first um, three players got a lot of points and tit for tat is somewhere down there. Now, um, I think the first tit for tat strategy um, is this one. Um, it's an omega tit for tat, whatever it means. Um, it is one of them, a, a derivative from tit for tat. But there were others that could go higher. And the interesting thing is, of course, they got higher because somewhere in the back, as you can see here, um, they have a lot of strategies that were suffering by giving the points to the other side. So cognition is there and they exploited it to make a fun statement about tit for tat, right? Good. Now, the tournament um, from Axelrod in the beginning and the points never changed had the given points. Um, three for the reward, five for the temptation, zero for the sucker, and one for the penalty. That is following exactly like the two requirements we had before. Five temptation is larger than the reward with three, which is larger than the penalty with one, and this is larger than one, uh, than zero in the sucker environment. Now, also important that the sum of five plus um, zero divided by two is two and a half is not larger than the three of a reward, as you can see here. Good, so these were the points. And um, in order to play that, um, it's now not so easy to play it with your, with your friends and family. Um, we have a tool, I already mentioned it, it's Net Logo, where we can try to find out what really works here. And there are different strategies you can try out in the Net Logo tool. And um, even though there are a lot of um, strategies like random, which means a node could change the, um, the strategy over time, which has to do with stability, as you will see later. Um, we will not use this later. There's an in unforgiving tit for tat, which means once they know about a player that has cheated, they will never go back to cooperation. And there's an unknown strategy, but we are mostly interested in the defection, cooperation, and tit for tat strategy. Defection means I always defect. Cooperation means I always cooperate. And tit for tat plays exactly as I said. First step is cooperation. And then we redo the steps that you have done with me in the last time. Which means if you have multiple of um, the players, you have to recognize them. You need cognition about them. In the NetLogo tool, players are represented by turtles. These are agents. And they can move around. And once they meet, they play the game. Right? We will see that. And um, I hope I can switch this on. Here's the NetLogo tool. Um, the NetLogo tool looks like this if you start it. Um, and we can just load some of them. There are model libraries, right? And what I will always do is I will search for something. I call it a prisoner's dilemma. And um, first of all, I can show you the basic one, right? Basic is very simple. You can see here a setup. And you see, you are silent, the partner is silent, silent answer, and you, you do something here. You see um, something with one year, five years, seems like the prisoner's dilemma, and you can see what happens. Uh, if you are silent, if the partner is silent, then you remain silent, but your partner confess, you are sentenced to five years in prison. Uh, you were silent, and um, partner silent was off, so he was betraying me. This is a very simple Thing. But what is interesting here, if you look into the info that will describe the game a little bit, what it does, and you see the code, right? And as I said, the code um, is, uh, is quite easy. It tells you what it will do in the simulation for the setup and what a player should do, what the agent should really do. But this is quite simple, right? Now, um, this is not the game we're really looking for. You can... Um, Go for the oh, this one, something I showed you also before, um, where you have different strategies, where somebody 
uh, X tit for tat, the other one X randomly. You can set it up, you press it, you play it once, and then you see what they do. You can play it once again, and you see what kind of points you will get. And if you don't want to press many times, you can play it repeatedly, right? And what you see is if one is playing randomly and the other one is playing tit for tat, and they both will get the same points because tit for tat just repeats what the other did in the last step. So it's not surprisingly what, what will happen here is an alternating thing and they will get some points out of it. Okay, also not so interesting. What I would like to go for is the, the iterative one. This is the one that you see also here in the slides. Now, I told you I'm not interested in the, the random approach. I put this to zero. And I don't want to have unknown or an unforgiven. So I have now 30 players, 10 are playing tit for tat, 10 are playing cooperation, and 10 playing tit, uh, defection. And I told you tit for tat is the best strategy, so you can see it here. Tit for tat is green, defection is blue, and cooperation is red. So if I go once, you see now they're moving one step, and here people are uh, meeting and there are two defection players playing against each other. Not surprisingly, both defect, both will get one point. Also here, two defection players, one point. Here we have a cooperation guy with a defection guy. And the defection guy will get five points, the temptation points, and the cooperation guy gets zero points because he was stupid enough to cooperate. In the top, you see uh, cooperation and tit for tat. Both will cooperate and they get re reward, right? So we play again. And here you see another temptation and cooperation guy, five and zero. Nothing happens, nobody's meeting. Defection, defection, cooperation, tit for tat. Nothing happens here. Here we see uh, tit for tat plays against defection. And he gets zero points while the defection guy gets five points. This means they have seen each other for the very first time, right? Because tit for tat starts with cooperation. If they would meet again, both will go into defection. You will see this later. Now here are two um, cooperation guys and I will move on. Why we are doing it here in the average payoff, you see the, the points for the different strategies and I can click one by one, right? Now I can go down with the speed a little bit and say go. Right, go a little bit faster, faster. So I let it play for a while and you see how the points of cooperation tit for tat are now moving. And maybe surprisingly, defection is quite high. Okay, let's stop it here. Now, you see here, he's a defection guy playing against tit for tat and he gets the points out of it, right? Um, I want to wait for something. Ah, here you see tit for tat playing against tit, uh, defection and both get one point, which means these two agents have met before. You need cognition to understand, I have met him before. He was not nice to me, so I will not cooperate. I will defect, okay? So from now on, it seems that most of the tit for tat players have understood who are the cooperative guys and who are the defective guys. But still, the defection strategy seems to be better. So let's speed it up a little bit. Again, and play it, and play it, and play it, and play it. So in what you see that over the long run, the defection guys are getting less points because they are not able to exploit the, the tit for tat guys. They still exploit the cooperative guys. And you see also that tit for tat is coming closer. And I told you tit for tat is the best strategy, but it's not the best strategy um, if you have these kind of cooperation guys in it. Why is this? Because the defection guys, they are still owning and making points over the cooperative guys. So it depends how the situation is, right? And it might be that somebody who plays tit for tat could also think, why I'm not doing the same? Because I get more points by exploiting those people, right? Um, 
For example, if I would stop it here and say, if the tit for tat players, they become defection, I set it up, then you will see the following. The corporation guys will only get points from themselves, but the others will get more points by um, exploiting the corporate, the nice corporation guys. But let's go back, stop here. I want tit for tat with 10 again. And I don't want to have the defection guys go here, also 10, but no corporation guys. So if we take them out of the, uh, the game and just look tit for tat against um, defection, so the good guys against the bad guys, so to speak, you see the following defection still wins until a certain time where tit for tat wins over the detection one. The question is, how long did it take it? Something that we will um, also exploit in, in the next um, slides. So this tool is quite cool. Um, we will also do something with it. And um, I will show you something later on where we really need to do this, right? Um, you can have uh, different scenarios, 10 defection, 10 cooperation, 10, 20 tit for tat, also interesting. Good, where do you get the tool? Um, here's the link, Northwestern um, University, and it's free for you. Um, there are different versions. Um, NetLogo version six is currently the best. And um, I'm using Windows, but you can also do this on Linux or Mac OS if you want. There are different examples. You can even look into how viruses spread. Very interesting in these days. Okay. Um, as I said, play around with some of the examples and um, you will find out. But for us, the most interesting are the four prisoners um, dilemma uh, things. Now, if you want to... Um, do it your own. I have made you here something like a tutorial. So start net logo, go to file, the models library. You saw it in the video, hopefully. You go to social science, or you, if you don't want to search for it, social science, unverified, prisoner's dilemma, PDN, in person, iterate it and open it. And then you, you get this one. If you press setup, that will give you the, the turtles, so the agents, and then press go, and the whole thing will start. If you are interested in very long simulations, you can even untick the view updates, then you don't have the graphical output, then you really have very fast outcome on the average payoff. Good. Um, I told you already there are six different cooperation games. Um, in this setup, we have only 10 per strategy. The points you see here are given by Axelrod. If you go into the code tab, you can even change the points if you want to see what happens, how the game will change. And um, the average payoff gives you the mean point. I will come back to this. And you, the, you are also able to extend the code by really printing out these things, right? And with this little tool, you can really look into what kind of strategy is the best. Now, if we just look into these three different strategies, like cooperation, right, where we say always cooperate, meaningless what the outcome was of the games before, or defection, always defect, meaningless what happened before, and tit for tat, which I said, first cooperation, and then always repeat the move that that explicit player has done before with you. Then if you look into this, then you have this kind of table where what happens if corporation plays against corporation? You get three points. Defection plays against corporation. Corporation will get zero points. If tit for tat plays with corporation, corporation will get three points. Now, if corporation plays defection, defection will get the five points. Defection with defection is the one and so on. So this table shows what will happen if you have three strategies. Now, um, are we interested in the Nash equilibrium or what we want to do here? We would like to understand what are the expected um, points we will get 
if we have certain number of players. So far, we assume 10 players for corporation defection and tit for tat. But what would change if we would change the number of players of a certain strategy? Now, we could do this, and I have done this before in the net, net logo where I just killed the corporative guys, right? And look that, oh, now tit for tat is way better than defection. If we have all the same 10 uh, players per strategy, then defection is still superior over tit for tat, even though they will come very close to each other. Now, um, by changing the number of players, you have an impact on the points. So do we always need the net logo tool for this? No, I think we can also um, can also look into the um, into some analytical ones. So remember when you look into the um, in the game, tit for tat, tat did not do so well in the beginning. It got the same points as corporation because it behaved like the corporation guys in the beginning as the defection, and only later after very long iterations. Um, tit for tat gets more points, way more points than corporation and comes very close to the defection. But defection is still better because it has the possibility to exploit the corporation guys who are willingly giving away the points to the defection. Okay, now here are other things that we did uh, with, uh, um, we, we presented in a different way and there are things um, that we are interested in. One is not only what amount of points we will get, but also when is the tipping point? So here you see um, something that we got from the net logo tool, but we printed with GNU plot um, for the book, where we say what are the number of points over the iterations if you play 10 against 10 or 1000 against 1000. So the ratio is the same, right? But the amount is different. Now, what you see here, this is the is the players. Um, 10 against 10. Defection has a big gain in the beginning and tit for tat needs some time but after before 1000 iterations in the simulation here you will see oh now tit for tat becomes better. If you have 1000 then the, the point where tit for tat becomes better is way later. You need 3000 iterations mainly. In the end they come up with more or less with the same amount of points. That's not the difference because it only depends on the ratio, but the point when it happens, this is different. So how can we derive the points and how do we understand the tipping point? So um, if you look into this, we said the corporation gains depends on the strategies that are used. We have three of them. The number of participation per strategy in the net low, we have 10, 10, 10, or in the example before, 1,000, 1,000, and the number of iterations we play. Good. So coming back to our table here, we say now that we calculate incorporation gains. And we say that we have a certain number of players for a given strategy. Here, T, don't mix it up with the temptation points we had before. It's a new variable. We are overriding it here. We have T is the number of tit for tat players, right? And D is the number of defection players, and C is the number of corporation players, right? I need very small variables because the equation become a little bit longer later on, right? And um, what are the expected points if two given strategies play against each other that we know already, right? This is the one. Where if we say tit for tat plays against defection, right? Um, defection will get five first time they play and later only one. And here, um, tit for tat against defection one, and tit for tat will get nothing in the first game, right? This is the only change there is, right? If we assume we have a large number of iterations, we don't care about this. Then we just take the bold numbers here. Now, how can can we now calculate the expected gain of corporation? It's very easy. You just go to the table. You say, okay, I get three points if I play against corporation, zero points if I go uh, when I play against defection, and three if I play tit for tat. Now, we need the probability meeting corporation guys, defection, or tit-for-tat. How can we do that? We just say, okay, there's a subgroup of the, all the agent playing corporation divided by the overall number of um, agents that play with me. And then a subgroup of people playing defection and a subgroup of um, agents playing tit-for-tat. So how can I find this out? 
I can look into, I have three different groups, D, the number of players defection, C, the number of player of cooperation, and T, the number of, play, of the players for tit for tat. These are all. So I just need to calculate all of them. But if, I, if I'm interested in the cooperation guy, I have to pull out one player. That's the expected gain of that player. So I've made it now with colors, the blue subgroup, the red and the green. Now what you can do, oops, you can say what, what happens here. So the expected gain now is how many players play cooperation? They are C players, but I'm one of myself. So C minus one are playing cooperation. And how many players are there at all that I can meet? I cannot meet myself. So it's all agents minus one over here. The, this is the variable for all. And you can put them all over the places here. And you will meet D defection players and T um, tit for tat players. It's not so important how many defection players you meet because you will, as a cooperating strategy, you will not get anything out of them. But here you will see these are the expected um, gain, cooperation gain, in dependency of the number of players. Good. What change for the defection guys? Also, I go to the um, table. I take out the points. I just take this number out here. The first, the first game will come back later to that. Also, here we have to say, let's look into that. The same idea. Now, all cooperation players are back here, and I pull out one defection player here, which means my sub will change. Now I have five points if I play against the cooperative guys, the stupid guys, so to say. I meet them C times over T plus D plus C minus one all players, plus if I meet my, my own guys, but I only meet D minus one of them because one of them I am myself, and I play, uh, meet um, T uh, tit for tat players over the overall number of players. So this is the equation for for the defection. So we can do the same for tit for tat, and um, I don't have to do it again. Now the only thing you have to make sure that you have T minus one here because you're interested in the tit for tat players. And this gives you the three different equations. Now, what can we do here? And we can now find out and say, we have the given equations. This zero can even go out if you don't like it, but for symmetry, I put it here. What would happen if I put C, D, and T? So C, cooperative players, 10 um, defection players and 10 tit for tat players into that. So I just put this into the equations, as you can see here. Um, it's three times, and it's 10 minus one is nine, and the overall is 29. Then zero times 10 over 29 plus three times 10 over 29. This gives you 57 over 20, 29, which is more or less 1.9655. Now, um, the same you can do with defection. Um, it's over in the denominator. We always have 29. The defection guys get 69 out of it, and the tit for tat gets 67 out of it, right? So um, this is something we can even now test with the net logo tool. But we we come back again and say, give me 10 corporation guys, and go as fast as you can. Set it up. Go. So. So in order to find the points, you can go with the cursor over the um, red line, and the red line here more or less gives us, uh, what is it, 1.92, and the green line tit for tat, 2.31, which is quite cool, and the, here the defection guys, ah, 2.36 right? It's not very precise because the, the granularity of the cursor is not good. I will show you later how you can make it better and find out something how to do this. Um, I could even try to do it now. So... I 
I open something here, continue, it's complaining. So what I did now, I put some boxes over here and um, I let now, we wanted to have 10 players only. Ten players. Ten players. Also ten players. Set it up. Go. So what you see here is now the mean number of the defection, mean for tit for tat, and mean for corporation. And there are other things. How many contacts are there? Whatever. Um, I've done that by looking into the code and introducing my own variables. I'll show you later how to do this. But if you now look into this, into the numbers, you see it's 1.96, that's what we also see here, 2.31 also, and 2.38. We're not there yet, right? We're close, but we can speed it up. We just say, don't do updates, so we don't. they don't move. So it goes very fast now, the number of um, ticks, so the simulation steps is going up fast. And you see, we only see lines here. The granularity is still bad, so we have to look here. So it's now um, 2.311, 2.38, Okay, let's wait a little bit. But you can already see the tendency. It will go down to 2.379 very soon. Oh. We reached the point already. It depends really on the granularity, how often they meet. And um, sometimes they can meet more often with the corporation guys, then the defection guys win a little bit, and then off they meet um, very often with themselves or the Titvatat more than with the corporation, then they lose a little bit. Um, this will take now a little bit of time. Good, but we will not wait for this. Um, the net logo. Um, extension that you see here will be also made available on the web page. Good. So we have now a way to calculate the expected gain for a certain strategy in a certain pool of strategies. But what happens with this first step, with the iterations? When will it happen that the one strategy is better than the other one? Right? This is not there yet. Good. First of all, um, Here's one thing that I would like to show you. If you compare just the cooperation with tit for tat, and um, more or less the first and the third part is more or less the same, right? Even though the minus one is over here, you can ex exchange it because they play against uh, each other with that. The only thing that is different if you um, put them together is this plus D. So the tit for tat with this strategy of um, changing the strategy the, or the, the op option it has against the, uh, the defection guys is that it takes out also the points from the defection. It understands, it has cognition about the bad behavior of the defection guys and now does not let exploit themselves but also takes points away from defection, right? And this is the leverage that the tit for tat has about the corporation, right? Even the corporation seems to be the one, why not always cooperate? No. Always cooperate is stupid, but having a strategy like tit for tat, that's smart. Good. What would change if we now look into the um, into the initial steps, right? And um, here we leave out the defection, uh, the cooperation strategy. Look only at defection and tit for tat. So um, if you see that, then you have two parts. If you play with the, this one, the defection guys play with themselves. They get one point out of it and they will meet d minus one of their own. But with the, um, with the tit for tat players, um, they get five points in the first step and one point later on. And this is then given by this very small green term one over e. So one over this um, iterations that you play. So the longer you play, this term is vanishing to zero and this becomes one, right? Um, but this has an impact, as you will see later. So this part, the whole part here is going towards zero if the iteration go to infinity, right? And if this goes towards infinity, this becomes one and you have this old term that is expected if you only have these two strategies. Now, if you look at tit for tat, the same applies for tit for tat. And um, if you play with yourself, you get three points, you get one, 
um, one point out of the defection guys in the later steps, but in the initial step, in the first step, you get zero points. And that's all. Now what you can do is you can um, say what is the outcome. So there you see that the defection guys have a fixed term plus uh, a stepwise term um, i plus 4 over i. This is if you put these things together, this term comes out. And down here, it looks like this is i minus 1 over i, only and only, because the other one goes out. Okay, now the question is, when will tit for tat be better than the defection strategy? That's quite easy. You can look it up in Maple. Um, we have done it here. These are steps where it's not 10,000 steps, it's only the um, up to um, 25 steps. Um, there was no way to, to chunk this number. And on the left, you see the, the defection points over time, over a given distribution of tit-for-tut players and defection. And in the middle, you see the tit-for-tut points over time, and then the gain. The gain, tit-for-tut over the defection. And the longer the game is, the larger is the gain. And um, what you see also is that um, the the gains of Tidratat have to rise a little bit while the points of the defection, they will go down. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the tool Maple, and you can get it from the university um, to make these plots quite, not complicated, but it will take some time. But in order to save you some time, here are the uh, plots that you just have to put into the um, shell of Maple, and then it will plot it for you. But this is just graphically. What we would like to know is, um, can we also calculate when is the gain, expected gains for tit for tat larger after a given step size than the one of um, the defection guys? What you only do is you just put the two equations that you have to each other and then you calculate it. Um, just to guide you through a little bit, what I did is uh, in the first step I multiplied with the denominator to get rid of that and um, then you have here 1, right? It's d minus 1, d, and at least the denominator is not there anymore, right? As it was a positive thing, you don't have to change the symbol, everything is fine. Now, um, what you also do is you want to get the i away from the denominator, so you have to multiply by i, and if you do this, then it's i d minus 1's i plus. And here the i goes away, but it's t times i plus 4t. And here the same thing, it's um, the d goes away, but d multiplied i, i d minus d plus 3 times t, and the i was multiplied into it, 3ti minus 3i. And now you have to sort a little bit, right? All the i's to the left, all the non i's to the right. And if you do that, um, you can see that after a while you can calculate i is minus d minus 4t divided by 2 minus 2t, but if you multiply the both um, ends here with minus 1, then you get out if i is larger than 4t plus d divided by 2t minus 2, then tit for tat is better than um, what um, defection can go. But these are the steps or the meetings that they need among each other. It's not the simulation length in that logo. It's not the number of iterations how they how all the agents meet. It's really the iterations that two dedicated players need to do that. In order to show you that, um, ah, we have something, but just to explain to you that this result is correct. Once again, you could ask Maple and say, this is an equation and you put in the equation and ask him when is this equal and Maple will give you this um, this uh, solution. Very powerful tool. And um, if you look at this, when this happens, when is really um, the tit for tat better um, than the defection, it of course depends also on the number of players. If you have a lot of players in the defection, only a few in, in tit for tat, then it takes a very long time, right? But if you have more or less the same amount of players, then um, let's say the same, if you look at here, if they are the same, then it's more or less five divided by two. It's after three steps, more or less, you would find out that um, they, are, um, they are gaining. Okay, now in order to make you 
aware why this is after um, after two steps. If you have um, two players, um, you could say, okay, if Tit for Tat plays against the first time against Defection, he gets five points and he gets zero points. If the Defection guy plays against another Defection guy, he will get one point. If the Tit for Tat plays, he gets three times, three points. So in this case, you had six against three. So here, the uh, defection will win over um, tit for tat in the first one. In the next one, the strategy will be changed. So if def defection meets defection, he gets only one point. If tit for tat meets tit for tat, it's still three points. But if they meet each other, it's only one point. Now the ratio is eight to th two, uh, eight to seven. Sorry. And if you do it again, the same um, points, you get ten to eleven. And this is the point where tit for tat takes over, right? And from there it continues to grow. Okay, this is only for two players to look into this if they play with the same one, what really happens. Good. Of course you can um, also do this and um, look into this in that logo. Here is only the um, the explanation how you can monitor one of the um, values. I already loaded my um, module or my library. You can also only lo load it, but in case you would like to, to monitor something yourself, you just click on the ground and say, um, with the right mouse and say, click the monitor, then you can give them any name you want and a variable, right? And um, the variable name could be, for example, mean defect score. If you're interested into the mean um, gain of the defect score, then we, we can call it like this. And this is also what we call it later in the code. And the display name will, you can also call it mean defect score, you can even call it toaster, it doesn't matter. Um, once you have done that, um, you can also say how many decimal places you want, font size, how big it should be, all fine. You say, okay, then you go to the code. I've shown you that, how to do it. And um, then you have to define the value, right? So mean score of all turtles playing each strategy, and I say mean defect score. So in the over or the globals, I define this variable. That is what I do. And later, when they um, do the scoring, there's in the code, you can look a little bit into this. You can say, okay, you have to set now the mean defect score. And what is this? This is the defect score divided by the number of defect games. These two are variables, defect score and number of de defect games that are already defined and you can use them. You can just divide them and set them on the mean defect score. But be careful because if it if there was no defection game, um, that could be zero and it could um, go in, uh, to segmentation fault. Therefore, you have to make sure may, that you only ca calculate the mean defect score once you um, have number of defect games that is larger than zero. So after the first game that was played by a defector. Okay. And once you have that, you will see that this will then show up in the monitor. And you can do, of course, the same, not only for mean defect, you can have mean um, cooperation or mean tit for tat play, try it out. Um, it's the same way, define it in the beginning, right? Define also here mean cooperation, mean tit for tat score, then go here and calculate it, and then you can put it on the monitor and see it. Okay, and if you do it only for once, you can now say setup, and you see the real value with the number of decimals you have done. And this is something I have done for you in the video, but if you want to play around with it, and knock yourself out and try something here. Good. Now, um, if you want some task for this, um, monitor the scores of all the strategies, and also look into the point in time when tit for tat outperforms the defection, right? And this you can find out. I also calculate the iterations, right? You can even stop the simulation when it happened and um, find out after how many steps and if this is something what you would have expected. Interesting is the iterations in that logo and the iteration and the number of games you played per agents are not the same. So make sure you're pr uh, plotting the number of iterations in the game, but also the number of games an uh, individual player has played. Good. With that, um, last one is what about stability and viability? Um, so how stable is something? Um, here I would like just to go to this 
Net Logo tool to show you again what you can do. Okay. Um, I will do it in a later video because um, I need to restart the Net Logo tool.